I lost my virginity in a glass shower, cornered on the 22nd floor of a contemporary apartment complex in Timunin, Guam. My legs are shaking, hardened clay falling to the tiles below. I stare in the mirror, pretending to wash my hands, trying to keep my, wrap my innocence around the moment. 20 minutes ago, we were biking the stiffened mud and sword grass of the south side of the island. My tire found its way into a muddy pocket of water, and I was taken down. We laughed. She unbuttoned my helmet, teased my spandex. Then it was her car, her place, the curves of her body in her shower, her confidence. She was powerful, inspiring, intimidating, and pleasantly so. She peeked her head out of the shower, the water resting on the tips of her breast, taking turns jumping off one by one like children off the dock of a lake. Are you joining me? She asked in jest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Just a minute. I stumbled over the words, still lost in my own reflection. You should probably take off your clothes then. You're not shy, are you? No, I'm not shy. I am absolutely terrified. <laughs> terrified that you'll take one look at me and see everything that I see. Every tiny imperfection, every pound gained, every pound lost. No, I'm not shy. My fear is easily masked by my intrepid character. I remove my clothes faster than I can think, enjoying her like I've done it a thousand times before. She trails my collarbone with her lips as she runs her fingers between my ribcage, following the beads of water down and over my stomach. I contract my muscles to meet her touch. Perfection is necessary. I run my hands over it often myself to confirm perfection or dissatisfaction. Your body is so beautiful. Her words seem distant. I reach for them, dying to know what they feel like. I scoff so hard in my head that it escapes out my voice. Do you disagree? I shake my head no for her reassurance. I can't imagine self-loathing would add anything of worth to the mood at hand. And I've always played self-confidence well. The emergency room is a difficult place to be for anyone, but emotions are intensified if you happen to work a few feet away. Everything is far too familiar. Everything except the physical discomfort at hand. My heart is in a lot of pain. It feels as though it is literally coming out of my chest, beating at an exponential rate. It is beating so fucking fast. I can feel every single rhythmic pound as if my own hands held it before me. She's going to code, the nurse yelled. This wasn't just any nurse. This one belonged to me. We were co-workers, stationed at the same naval hospital in the same Asian Pacific, attached to the same surgical department. She was a lovely woman and a very dear friend of mine. I attempted to bake her a German chocolate cake for her birthday and fucked it up tremendously. She's loved me ever since. She was terrified for me. I could see it all over her Germanic features. Guilt crept over me. This wasn't an accident, nor was it the first time. I had played with these before. Diet pills in the cleverly disguised form of pre-workouts. I knew what they were. I knew a lot of things that I pretended not to. These metabolism-increasing, heart-attack-inducing pills were cocked up with, cocktailed up with a mild starvation, an 18-mile run, extreme heat, insomnia, and caffeine in the equivalence of 18 shots of espresso. My fist-sized heart was ready to explode inside the little body I was so eager to make smaller. My sweet nurse leaned over me. Don't forget to fucking breathe, okay? she said tenderly. Poor woman. She had been around me way too much. I had her cursing like a sailor. She was adoring. I was insensitive. My heart finally gave out. 
No surprise there. I was ready, as I mentioned, not my first rodeo. She was not. Code blue, she screamed. The terror on her face was the last thing I recall as the room fell out of existence. I came into consciousness to almost the exact same scene a few hours later. My nurse, still as frazzled as I left her, but trying so graciously not to show it. Beautiful, sweet girl. You have one of the strongest hearts I've ever known. She lay down in the hospital bed beside me and I buried my face in her chest. This heart? I wish you knew how weak it was. It can't even handle a little caffeine. I never knew a home in the sense that most people did as a child. I only knew houses. Many different houses. And in all of these houses, this was by far my favorite room. Bookcases filled every inch of the wall space. Books filled every inch of every case. There was one full set of Britannica, which I assumed was for show since no one ever touched them. Alongside the unpopular Britannica, there were a good number of teach yourself how to read, write, spell, calculate. Well, you get the picture. I was homeschooled. More like I was self-schooled. My household's education level couldn't help me pass the sixth grade with any amount of effectiveness. This left approximately 80% of the shelf space for our dazzling how-to collection. How Jesus Christ can make you feel less guilty. How to cure your child's gayness. How to lose 20 pounds in three days. How to eat whatever you want without gaining a pound. How to eat nothing at all. I could do this all day. All the self-help you could ever need could be found in my classroom. My mother would enter like clockwork and rummage the shells for who she wanted to be that day. Some days she chose to be closer to God. Some days she chose to eat less. Some to eat more. Some to not eat at all. Some to be further from God. Some to be further from me. And that would be that. She would stumble across her desired self, pick it off the shelf, and make her exit. Jennifer, get me a trash bag, quickly. My mother half yelled in a state of panic. Okay. I passed her a requested item of choice and stood back, confused, as she frantically barged through the cabinets of the kitchen one by one, as if she was intending to hold the cereal as at gunpoint, while she stole all the precious jams and butters. Almost all of our food was chosen and sent to its premature demise. She made her way to the freezer and I locked eyes with the egos. I said a little prayer under my breath. Please, dear Lord. I know I said I didn't believe in your existence, but could you please spare those golden circles of goodness? <laughs> Not much to my surprise, my prayer was discarded, discarded almost as quickly as my frozen waffles. Jennifer, did you know that gluten is killing half the country? I didn't give myself too much time to process the statement. I didn't need much. Why only half? <laughs> I asked sarcastically, but also slightly intrigued. I'm serious. This isn't a joke. It's all in this book. She took a second off her rampage to slide it across the counter in my direction. A bright yellow cover, a title screaming, gluten-free can set you free. Free. Free from the countless hours she spent in front of the mirror, day in and day out. Free from the food I had seen her eat when she thought no one was watching. Free from the regret that I saw to follow. Free to find contact with the longing in my eyes for hers. Free to spend time with me. Free to notice me. Free to notice herself. Free from the constant desire for perfection. Free from what, Mom? Is all I managed to muster. I don't like your tone, Jennifer. You have no idea how serious this is. Nope. Can't say I do. I'm eight, and I fucking love Egos. <laughs> and I know that they're a delicacy in this house because my dad is a part-time pastor, part-time painting contractor, trying to feed six kids, and that all, the food, all of our food comes at the mercy of food stamps, and that Egos aren't cheap. Talk is cheap. We all know that the value is held in the results. And for me, the results were dangerously successful. It's very difficult to identify an eating disorder or an addiction when your outcome is being praised in every regard. 
I was faster than every woman and most men. A decent accomplishment anywhere, but even more exaggerated in the military, which is where I currently existed. I was stronger and buzzing with extraordinary amounts of energy at every waking hour. I was unimaginably productive and an essential part of every team assigned because of it. I was glorified. Interesting fact. The original formula for a widely popular pre-workout known as Jack 3D contained a substance, diamethamoline, or DMAA, an illegal drug that the FDA didn't catch until long after I had my hands on it. Three heart attacks, six heat strokes, and hundreds of fainting spells after. Side effects included depression, anxiety, loss of consciousness, chest pain, and death, according to the FDA. According to me, side effects included incredibly fast weight loss, enormous amounts of energy, and the, and the ability to run a half a marathon before work every morning, and another half every afternoon. The PRT, one of the three million acronyms in the United States Navy, stands for the Physical Readiness Test. Two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of sit-ups, followed by a mile and a half run. We lined up on the track after completing our calisthenics assessment and braced for the command. My eyes were moving from one thing to the next before I could make sense of the last. They landed on my hands just long enough for me to notice them shaking. I dismissed them. Most parts of my body were shaking. My heart was scared. I felt her tell me, but I dismissed her too. My veins drowning out for soft pleas with their loud protrusions from my arms. I've always enjoyed the look of my veins when I'm underhydrated and overexerted. On your marks, get set, go. I felt nothing for a time. I knew my feet were hitting the tar-covered racetrack because I saw my knees take the impact and bounce my shins into their next stride. I passed every woman on the track before the run had, run had even begun, most three or four times after. The men I passed gave me one of two looks as I breezed by them. Disappointment swallowed by embarrassment, or embarrassment masked by resentment. I get it. It was unnecessary. I was showing off. I was there, in that place. The place where my body meant nothing. I meant nothing. A place I craved. My heart was quick to remind me of its meaning when I found my way over the finish line to a heat stroke. I woke up to a peering crowd. Nice job, Foley. You broke the hospital record. Fastest woman in Guam. My superior officer congratulated. Hey, Foley, that was a damn good run. But lay off the drama queen shit next time, eh? My buddy's attempt at being endearing. It was a hard character trait to muster in our world. None of us were really very good at it. Thanks, asshole. Try keeping up next time, why don't you? My attempt at returning is sentiment. I return often to my old habits, relapse into my obsessive desire for perfection. I step off the scale and stare down at the numbers. They control me. Those fucking numbers carry so much power. I can tell you exactly what it feels like to weigh 134 pounds or 114 pounds. It feels like four more than you're satisfied weighing because the numbers will never really satisfy. The smaller you get, the smaller you want to become. The first time I smashed my scale to pieces, it felt incredible, relieving, redemptive, healing. The second time it was a knowing that it wouldn't be the last. I brought the weight of the hammer down and watched the screen tweak an electrical goodbye, the numbers flashing rapidly. The first hit renders the scale useless. I continue anyway, lose control, take control, back for myself. What the hell are you doing in there? He asked after me, intrigued by the commotion. Fixing something. I yell back. I'm not sure if I was actually fixing anything, but god damn was it a valiant effort. She finds the place she knows, sends my body fiercely flinching away, and achingly drawing near all in the same instant. 
centimeters below my hip, where it wraps around to meet the lowest part of my stomach. She trails her fingertips over my skin lightly, and my body convulses to meet her. God damn, Jens, you are so fucking beautiful. Maybe I'm here, in a place of healing. Maybe I'm closer than I thought. Maybe I've just said, maybe I've just never known anyone so raw and honest. But when she delights in me, I believe her. I reach for the words, and this time, this time I feel them. And they feel like the fucking truth.